So a concise definition of information management is that it's the study of or the consultation about the intersection of people, information, and technology in an organizational context. So when we talk about organizations, you have to keep in mind that we're not just talking about big organizations that you and I are familiar with, like Boeing or Amazon. We're also talking about governmental agencies um, and small nonprofits. So it covers a range of organizational contexts. Uh, one thing people should know about information management, um, based on the definition I just gave you, um, something that, that people need to keep in mind is that any information management process that's being changed or introduced um, is going to involve people, information, and technology. Now, in an organization, that means that there needs to be a range of people in the room whenever decisions are made or processes are implemented. So if you think about it, the people in charge of technology, that's IT, that's easy, right? You have a dev in the room, maybe a QA person, um, maybe somebody to, um, to buy equipment or to implement software, but you also need the people who are in charge of people, so middle managers or HR uh, representatives, and then there's also the information piece, which a lot of times is forgotten, and that has to do with information security, um, information dissemination policies, and other people who maybe overlook, uh, look over um, things like regulations about information in that organization. So another aspect of information management that uh, can sometimes trip people up is that solutions are not portable from one organization to another often, and that has to do with organizational culture. And I can give you an example for that. There's a group of strategies that's very hot these days in information management called Bring Your Own Device, or BYOD, meaning that people can bring their own phones or their own laptops into work and, and get onto the network and, and makes them very mobile and very flexible. Um, and that may work really well in certain contexts, like in certain retail contexts. Um, but if you, if, say I uh, implemented that and I was very successful in a retail uh, context, mm -hmm. and I took that over to healthcare, it may not fly, because healthcare is a very different industry, and it has different regulations. And so that may not be accepted by the people who have to take on that new technology or software. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, is that solutions aren't always portable. You can look like a rock star in one situation, but in another, you can have an information management process totally fail. Mm -hmm. um, another thing about information management um, that I try to remind people of when I um, teach them about it is that code is easier to change than people. Um, people are generally creatures of habit, and they have work processes that um, they're used to and that make their lives easier, and it dictates how they spend their days at work. And since you're part of an organization, you have to take that into account. There's actually a whole uh, discipline called change management um, that actually addresses those sorts of changes that are made, even just with software. It's fine to give people training up front, but if you find they're not using the software, then you may have to go back and address the change over and over and over again. So that's part of information management that a lot of people don't think of. They think of devices and they think of you know snazzy software or ERP solutions. They don't think about the people part of it. Mm -hmm. From an information management perspective, how would you improve the Obamacare? Mm -hmm. So I don't have an answer to that question per se, but I will tell you how I would analyze that question as an information manager. When you say improve Obamacare, my first question as an information manager would be, um, who am I improving it for, right? Who is the constituent that's important to you? Now the work I do, I focus on, on end users meaning that it would be the people who want to purchase health care for their own personal use or for their family's use. So if we tackle it from that aspect, we already have the people part knocked off, right? Now we have to talk about the information and the technology. So questions I would ask about information around the implementation of Obamacare would be, was the information disseminated well? Was there any misinformation that was being disseminated? Um, do people feel like they can access the information when they need to? I know that here in Washington State, there have been a lot of problems um, with the Washington State Healthcare Exchange, um, meaning that people are having trouble actually just accessing the system. So that's a problem, that's a technology problem. So that's how you would think about that question as an information manager, and you could come at it from, say, uh, did the government do what they needed to do, not only to pass the law, but also to make sure this was a valid system? And in that case, um, Barack Obama is actually the first president to have a chief information officer um, as an advisor. So he has thought about how information fits into um, his administration.